What is up everybody? Victor here again at Run With Us, uh, ready for another shoe review where we go over the latest releases in the running world. Uh, actually today we're gonna have two shoes that we're gonna be comparing. Super excited to finally be able to talk about this one. I wanted to be able to get enough miles in both of these shoes to really have good feedback since a lot of what I tend to hear, I just feel like maybe they don't put enough miles on them or I, I just, I've, I've been searching for comparisons that would let me know like, all right, which shoe am I gonna prefer? Or does this one really stack up against, you know, the other? Are they really that similar? Because, you know, it's, it's, it's really interesting, you know, when, when shoes are released. Uh, and one thing is, you know, the whole marketing behind it. And another thing is what you actually end up feeling when you run in the shoe. So enough with the intro on that. But today we're gonna be talking about two shoes, the Saucony Endorphin Speed and the Saucony Endorphin Pro. So not doing the shift today, I personally haven't been running in it. Um, I just, I don't have a pair. Uh, so these are the two that, that I was really dying to get my hands on. Uh, so these are the ones we're gonna break down. Before we go into the similarities and differences of these shoes, let's get into the tail of the tape. I did remember to say that this time. So the, the Saucony Endorphin Pro weighs in at seven and a half ounces for a men's size nine. It's got about a 33 millimeter heel with about a 25 millimeter forefoot, and it has an eight millimeter heel to toe drop. And it also comes in at $200. The Saucony Endorphin Speed, on the other hand, weighs in at closer to a 7.8 ounces for a men's size nine and the same stack heights, about a 33 millimeter heel and a 25 millimeter forefoot and also has that same eight millimeter heel to toe drop. One thing to note if you're looking at all three shoes, including the shift, is that the endorphin shift does have a lower heel to toe drop. It's got a four millimeter heel to toe drop and they did that because they just feel that that lower, uh, that lower toe drop uh, just adds a little bit more stability uh, to the shoe given that it has a higher, uh, a higher stack height because it, it is more shoe. Okay, so let's get into a little tech and go over what these shoes entail. Uh, before I get started though, I do want to point out that I put inserts in basically all my shoes. My arches give me a ton of little problems I won't get into right now. Maybe I'll talk to somebody that can help me and we'll kind of break all that type of stuff down in the future. I uh, just wanna let you guys know that I do take out the sock liner and slap these, which have been my favorite right now, the super feet, but the run specific ones, they work amazing. Okay, so there's the disclaimer and let's get on with the shoe review. First thing that I wanna know about these two shoes is they really have a similar fit. While the speed has a little bit more going on in the upper and the Pro is a little bit more thinned out. In general, they have a very similar fit. Okay, so here is where they get super awesome and really exciting. So Saucony debuted this, what they're calling a Power Run, let's see Let's see if I can get this right, Power Run PB midsole. It is their lightest, it is their lightest, it is their lightest and bounciest to date. It is amazing. I, I love it, it's, it really is light. It, has a lot of life to it, energy. It's a very lively ride. So super, super excited about this new midsole that they, they came out with uh, in these two shoes. The Shift, on the other hand, does not have the Power Run PB. That is just straight Power Run, uh, but I won't get into that here. Just wanted to point that out. They also both use what Saucony is calling uh, their Speed Roll technology. So Speed Roll technology, all this basically is, it's they built a rocker into the shoe, which when I put it on, <laughs> I gotta say, just coming from being an exclusive Hoka runner, um, it, I was like, have I been in Hoka too long? Because I feel like this shoe has a rocker. Then I, I took the shoe off, I looked inside, and then wham, uh, if I had the sock liner in there, you'd see that it says speed roll. But uh, yeah, anyway, it, it does have a rocker in there. And I, I really think they did an awesome job with this. It, it doesn't feel like it, it's too intrusive. It doesn't feel like it, it's adjusting you in a super way. It just really gives you a nice roll off and it's designed to really just kind of keep you propelling forward. And I think it really does a good job of that. Also the, the outsole, while they're different colors, uh, they're really similar, mainly the same. Uh, I feel like they have a great amount of grip. Um, it, they've held up really well. I put them both through uh, 18 to 20 mile uh, runs you know, in the heat, all over the place. Um, so the upper is starting to take a beating, but the outsole was holding up really, really well. Uh, nothing really to kind of note about that. They both have a very similar uh, outsole structure. So 
uh, awesome job there. Okay, so now let's get into some of the differences between these two styles. I know that they're the same stack height, but for some reason, the speed just feels like a little bit more shoe. It just feels like I'm a little bit more, I don't even know if it's maybe just the way they, they kind of colored the, the outsole, but I don't know, when I put it on, it just feels like a little bit more shoe. Okay, so here's where we get into the huge difference between these shoes. The speed does not have a carbon fiber plate. The, the endorphin speed has a TPU, it's like a nylon plate. It, biggest thing to note here is that it's way more flexible. This shoe, you can flex, flex it a ton really. Um, and that, that's important and I'll touch on that in a little bit. But just wanna show you guys that the Pro does have the carbon fiber plate and this puppy is really hard to kind of flex. You do really notice the difference in the plate as soon as you start doing this whole thing with it. Again, so I'll show you guys the speed just for reference. This thing just flexes really easily. So this results in a couple of things that I'll go over right now. The speed is gonna be an overall softer ride. Uh, there's really no way around it. it. It is a softer ride and I feel like it does lack some of that pop that the Pro has because that plate is so flexible. Uh, I, the stiffness of the plate is part of what kind of makes it you know, propel, you know, it just kind of like a slingshot. Uh, and I feel that that plate in the speed really doesn't help it as much as it would the Pro. Uh, and it, it's, it really is noticeable. So the speed is a softer ride, while the, the Pro is a, a springier ride, a faster ride. This isn't to say that the speed can't be a fast shoot. It, it is super light. They're both really, really light. So that is just freaking amazing when it comes down to these shoes and something I really, really love um, in, in these styles, just being as light as they are. But I, I do notice a difference in, in the plate. Being a little bit more flexible was a little disappointing just because I tend to, my, my not me, my arch tends to really kind of uh, resonate better with uh, with a stiffer shoe. So I, I would have liked it for it to be a little stiffer. But overall, it's, it's still a really amazing ride. The Pro though, having that really stiff midsole is what really kind of launches it forward and puts it, I think, really sets it apart from uh, from the speed. It, it really adds propulsion and it, it adds a, a faster ride uh, than you could pretty much get out of the speed because of that. The upper, so the upper on both of these shoes, I think is really solid, but they do have very different uppers. The Pro has more of a deconstructed kind of stripped upper that you'll find in, in racing shoes. Uh, there's not a, a ton going on to it. It's, it's lighter, uh, it's more breathable, but the, the speed has a little bit more of that lightweight trainer type of, you know, Freedom, Kinvara type of upper. It's got an engineer mesh. Honestly, this total preference, um, but I, I actually prefer the speed upper. I like having a little bit more. Um, I, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of, of race shoe uppers just because, uh, I, I don't know, I, I like having just a little bit uh, kind of going over my foot. Yeah, it's, it really is just preference, but I tend to lean on the, the, the speed side than uh, compared to the Pro. And then also durability. So this is still up for debate. Uh, I, I put in about 100 plus miles on both of these shoes. They are holding up really, really well. But you know, I want to see what happens when I get when I get up there past you know 200 and 300 miles. I want to see how how much I can I can pull out of these uh, these shoes. Uh, one of the things that I I really love about a shoe like let's say the Carbon X is that that shoe is a workhorse. It might not be the lightest. Uh, of you know this whole carbon fiber wars and and you know the it, I don't put the the carbon X as a true racer because it, I do think it, it weighs a little bit too much but it is a workhorse and when you're paying a lot for a shoe you want to be able to use it for workouts and races and you want to be able to use it for more than just one race uh, so. I really, I'm really excited to see how much I can get out of these shoes because so far they're holding up really well and you get a lot of bang for your buck. Whereas there are some shoes out there in the market where you literally have to just only use them when it really, really counts. I've been really, really happy with how these shoes are holding up. One thing that broke my heart is I got this upper super dirty on day one. It actually looks like I've been putting this thing through a lot, which I have, um, but yeah, it just, it got dirty really quick. and. I really, really love this color, uh, this color combo. I love flashy colors. I love when it, uh, the blend of these, everything just really works. The white upper, it, it just, it, it looks flashy. It looks fast, makes you feel fast, makes you want to go fast. So they really nailed it. Okay, so who are these shoes for and which one are you going to prefer having? Let's kind of break that down really quick. If you want a softer feel, the speed is for sure the way to go. 
Uh, also, if you don't like having a, you know, a carbon plate in your shoe, that real stiff feel, then the, the speed is the way to go. If you want that true kind of racer nowadays, that it, it's got that plate, it's got a lot of propulsion, it's got a lot of pop, uh, then go with the Pro. It is firmer though. I do have a friend that runs in some other styles that coming from, from that to this, uh, to the Pro, he did feel that it is a little firm. Uh, it, it, he does feel it to be a little bit on the firmer side when he got up there in mileage, like an 18 miler or something like that. So uh, if, you, if you want that softer feel, the speed is the way to go. Um, I've been okay in the pro going long distances, but again, just it's more of a preference thing and, and, and kind of what you prefer. Also, if you've been a Kinvara fan and waiting for the shoe that you really want to fall in love with, I really think the the speed is that shoe that a lot of Kinvara fans have have been waiting for and, and anticipating. So if, if you've been a, a Kinvara fan or a Freedom fan, uh, then I, I really think you should try the speed. If you want to bounce your ride with just enough of a soft feel, then the Pro is definitely the way to go. If I had to choose between, oh, if I had one run that I really needed a nail tomorrow and I had to pick between one of these two, I would for sure go with the Pro. But again, that's just my personal preference because I like that stiffness. Like if the speed was stiffer for some other reason, um, I don't know what that may be, but if it was just stiffer in general, then I think I, I would probably choose uh, the speed because that soft feel is, is pretty sweet. To close out, I really just want to say it is really, really difficult to release one amazing shoe. And I really got to give kudos to Saucony because I haven't run in the shift, but runners that I know that have, have been really enjoying it. And so if, if that's the case, then I really think they nailed it with this, this lineup and this endorphin collection that they've released. Uh, it, it really is a difficult thing to do and they nailed it from the look to the distinction between them, the marketing campaign. I just think they, they really nailed the overall package. Uh, the one thing that it is hard is the inventory. I know we're in the middle of the craziest year of a lot of our lives, but man, that inventory it is hard to get a hold of. So it's just something. Hopefully we'll be able to get our hands on more uh, come September, which I see that the inventory should be coming in a little bit more uh, in, in the coming month. That's really it for this review. Uh, if you guys have any questions, comments, thoughts, if you run in either of them uh, and you, you know, you think uh, differently, I don't know, just, you know, let us know. Uh, all you can, you can reach out to us on any of our social platforms. Uh, you know, always excited to talk running and, and break down shoes. Uh, if you want us to compare these against, you know, another style or whatever, another brand, uh, super happy to do that. Uh, so I just really wanted to stick to these two shoes within the Saucony lineup, but we can always expand and, and compare other, other brands as well. If you have any thoughts, questions, shoot them our way uh, on any of our social platforms here in YouTube, Instagram, wherever, uh, you know, you can find us, hop in and chat. Uh, you know, we love talking running and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace guys.